Hi, you're with Chandi, Pat Goodley once again. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how can you write an if function in Power Query. Now, not only are we going to discuss the if function, but also nitty gritties like nested if statements, and function, if and and, if and or, and all of that kind of stuff. I have a very simple data here. The first column being the student name, the second column being the marks of the students on 100, and the attendance percentage. Now, I've already got the data uh, into Power Query, and I've written a couple of if statements. I'm just going to open up the same query and show you what I have done. All right, so the first thing that I'd like to write is uh, the pass or the fail status and depending upon the marks. So if the marks are more than 40, then the student is passed. 40 or more than 40, then the student is passed. Otherwise, the student is failed. Let's see how can we write that using the if function. Now, if you were writing the if function for the first time, um, I've got to tell you that in the add columns tab, there is something called as conditional column, which is nothing but the if function. And when you click on conditional column, something like this opens up. So let me just open that. All right, something like this opens up where you can declare the name of the column that you want to have. And then you can start writing the if. So in the column name, I have selected the marks. That means marks are greater than or equal to 40. That's what I've done. Uh, 40 is my number against which I'm comparing. Uh, if the condition is true, then I say pass. Otherwise, I say fail in the else statement. Now, a couple of things to note down here. Number one is that I am getting these greater than, less than mathematical operators only because the marks column has been converted to a data type as a number. If this wouldn't have been a number, I wouldn't have got all of these uh, greater than, less than kind of things, right? So Power Query is data type sensitive. The other thing is that uh, as of now, I have compared it to a static value, which is 40. The result pass is again a static value, which is a text and fail again is a text. Although you don't need to write pass and fail in the inverted commas, without inverted commas is absolutely fine. But I could have also compared it against a column. So uh, maybe I could just select another column here and then I'll be able to get all the list of the columns that I have in the data. But since I don't have that as of now, I'm just going to write 40 right here. So is the case with action if true and so is the case with action if false. And in case you want to add uh, multiple levels of if, you can add a clause. We're going to take a look at that later. And then you can write multiple levels or hierarchies of if, like nested if statements. Well, that is all about writing the simple if, right? And you can also take a look at the formula bar. If marks greater than 40, then pass, else fail. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. So what do I have here? If marks are more than 70 and the attendance is more than 70, then grade A, else grade B. That means there are two conditions that I need to check for. One is marks more than 70 and the attendance percentage also more than 70. Now, this is the classic example of writing an AND function. Uh, you would use an AND function uh, in Excel to be able to write that. Uh, but you don't have an AND function in the conditional column. So if you go and click on conditional column, you wouldn't have the option of writing the AND function. I'm going to do is I'm going to smartly write the IF function in such a way that it becomes the equivalent of an AND function. So let's just take a look at that. All right. So uh, again, I give a column name grade. I say if marks is less than equal to 70, then it's grade B. If uh, attendance is less than equal to 70, then again, it becomes grade B. Rest everything is grade A. But since we cannot write the AND function in the conditional column, this is how we end up writing the nested if function, which is more or less equivalent of the AND function. Now, let's just solve the same problem using the AND function. And what we're going to do this time is not use the conditional column, but we are going to use um, a custom column and we will manually type the function down there. All right. So where is the custom column? Go to the add columns tab and right here we have custom column. When, when you click on this, something like this opens up. So you can see that I have given a new column name called grades. And this is where I have the ability to type my own if and or, or functions, right? So I'm going to say equals to marks, sorry, equals to if um, column name is marks greater than uh, equal to 70 uh, and and function and so I've just written the and here attendance is greater than or equal to 70% then a else b now there are just a couple of things that you have to look forward to um, if you compare this with excel now in excel you kind of use parentheses and you write uh, everything 
of the if function in the brackets but here there are no brackets you just start writing that also here the case matters so if is in small right and we have used the and operator here equals to and and uh, this checks for this condition and this checks for this condition in case you want to check for one more condition i'm going to end up writing an and function one more time and writing another condition right here that checks the third condition as well but since i have only two i'm just going to write that now if you're writing the if function in the box here which is the custom column box and you write any text you've make you've got to make sure that you write the text in the inverted commas that was not true when you were writing the conditional column and we were declaring pass and fail we wrote pass and fail without the inverted commas and yeah that's pretty much it uh, nothing too complicated you write if you write uh, then you write else me please make sure that you have to write if then and the else uh, even if you want to leave out something blank you can write a null I mean, if I just don't want to write B, I can end up writing a null and U double L small letters. And this would just leave out uh, anything that is uh, other than the A grade. But you've got to write all the three parts, the if, the then, and the else part. Now let's just take a look at that. How do we write an or statement? So let's just take a look at the third example here. If the marks are less than 40 or the attendance is less than 40, then we fail the students, else we pass the student. And let's just take a look at the last one that I've written here. Almost the same thing. I'm saying if marks are less than 40, and instead of using the AND function here, I'm using the OR function here OR uh, and comparing it with the attendance here, then FAIL, ELSE, PASS, right? Simple enough, nothing too complicated here. Just as the same way that we wrote IF and the AND function, I have used the OUR operator here. The rest of the rules just apply the same. All right, so that's how you write the IF, nested IF, uh, the OR functions and the AND functions in Power Query. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.